Hello, welcome to All These Repairs. Today we will be removing the instrument cluster from VW Cabriolet. While this is not necessarily a challenging repair, there's a few tips and tricks that I figured I would share with you guys so we can make sure we minimize the damaging of plastic pieces. For this repair, we'll need a 10 millimeter wrench, T27 Torx bit, a 24 millimeter socket, a radio removal tool, a flathead screwdriver, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Since we will be removing the airbag in this vehicle, as well as the flasher relay, there's a chance that we can burn out some fuses. So we're going to start with removing the negative battery terminal here. It's a 10 millimeter socket or wrench. Just wiggle it off, place it aside. Next, to remove the airbag, it'll be these two T27 Torx screws on both sides. One on each side, that is. And now the airbag can be removed. Simply just pull it out and disconnect this connector and set the airbag aside. On non-airbag vehicles is a non-airbag steering wheel. Instead of removing the airbag, you just simply need to carefully pry up on this little rubber piece right here. And that also gives you access to the steering wheel screw, which we'll be removing now. Removing the airbag is accomplished by using a 24 millimeter socket. And here you can remove the little washer here. And what some people recommend is to make a little mark where the air or the steering wheel lines up with this steering post, but I just make sure to turn the steering wheel perfectly straight, then remove it and put it back on the exact same way, so perfectly straight. And just pull it off and pull the connector through and set it aside. Next step will be to remove the radio. If you still have the original radio, you can get one of these radio removal tools. They're very handy. Put it in, pull it out a little bit. It takes some wiggling sometimes. One side and the other side. Carefully pull it out. Remove this little adapter. And then on the back of the radio here, we have two connectors. Just push in on the tab and pull them out one and two and then we are going to disconnect the antenna as well set the radio aside next step we're going to remove these vent controls here you can just pull straight out on all of these now that the radio is open from behind you can push out on this little plastic piece here carefully pull it out and then this wire was all just came disconnected but squeeze the connector and pull it out and next we can start with the switches. So we're missing the two switch blanks here, which we're also going to be replacing in this video. Just pull this off. You can see here's actually a plastic tab that's broken, so be careful not to break it off when you're removing it. And then these switches, just push from behind. You can pull them straight out and then carefully wiggle the connector off right here. Put the connector through again. Same with this hazard relay switch this one's being a little difficult i had to reach in and push this tab aside then you can pull this wire off this blue one if you don't connect the battery disconnect the battery and this touches a ground you'll fry some of your um fuses disconnect this brown wire that goes to the light in the flasher relay and then disconnect the switch push the wires carefully through again we don't want to break any plastic pieces as you can see here, they've already been broken. We replaced them. Next, we can come to this side over here. Remove this plastic piece. Simply just get a screwdriver and very carefully in one of the corners. Pry the piece out. Again, be careful not to break any of the metal plastic clips. And now we have access to our screws. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and sometimes a sixth screw up here. Remove those.
Looks like we don't have a screw up here, but we do have two right here. Okay, and carefully pull this out. We still have to disconnect the connector to the fan control, and we have to disconnect these two switches here. So first, pull this out a little bit. Here, we're losing one of the screws. Disconnecting this fan switch, simply just pull backwards and wiggle on this plug. It's on there pretty good, usually. All right, and now over here, we're going to disconnect this plug from the headlight switches, wiggle that off, and then down here, disconnect this little plug that go to our seatbelt and our brake switch. And now we have this dash fascia, and as you can see, we've already JB welded washers in here. I don't think I've seen a single cabriolet that's not cracked, so you can just carefully glue some washers in here, and then that usually does a really good job holding the plastic together so it doesn't crack anymore. Next step, we're going to remove the instrument cluster, which is gonna be two screws, one over here, one over here. Make sure not to drop it inside. And the second screw. Okay, and now we have to disconnect the speedometer cable at the back of the instrument cluster. Before we do that, we have to reach around. We're gonna disconnect these two screws or unscrew them so that we don't break any of this dash control. Okay, next step, now that we have this disconnected, we are going to sneak our arm around and disconnect the speedometer cable at the back of the instrument cluster. To disconnect, when I disconnected the speedo cable from the back of the instrument cluster, I reached around and I felt for this tab that's right here that you can see. And then I squeezed it in, and as you can see, it, it moves that little plastic piece inside. And then you just simply slide it back. Okay, now that it's disconnected, we can carefully tilt the instrument cluster forward, pull it straight out. And then if you see on the back here, we have this connector. We can dis disconnect this one. Sometimes you might have a little cruise control connector that goes right here, disconnect that. And then finally on the right side here, we have our dash connector and just wiggle it out as well. And then we have the instrument cluster removed. Okay, installation of the instrument cluster will be the reverse of removal. Let's put this first connector in, then slowly slide the instrument cluster in. Attach this second connector from on the bottom here. Okay, on this instrument cluster on the left side here, you can see this little rubber pad. Make sure that that sits on the metal. If not, you can pull it out just a little bit. And then carefully slide the instrument cluster in. And then next we're gonna to have to reach around and attach the speedometer cable. So just kind of feel with your hand. Okay. And then it's time to screw the instrument cluster in with these two screws. So they should be two Phillips head screws. If you're not, if you didn't quite keep track of what came from where, it's gonna be the one with the washer attached. The previous owner lost one, so now we're stuck with this one. This doesn't have to be too tight. Good, and then the next step now that we're done with the instrument cluster here, we're going to attach this vent control again. This should be two screws with a somewhat coarse thread. 
So we're gonna use one of these and one of these. They should be they should both be the same with a black head, kind of like this one in here, but the previous owner lost them. Pay attention when you guys remove these things and don't lose them in your dash like everyone else. And if you lost them in the dash or if someone else did, well, you have to make do with what you have, right? This doesn't need to be too tight. We don't want to break it. That's good. Okay, and then the next step will be to install this fascia again. Similar procedure. First, we're going to do this bottom connector, this white one, then we're going to do the um, headlight switch, then we're going to do this heater switch, and then we're going to finish up with these two uh, connectors for our warning circuit as well as our defrost. Okay, now comes the headlight switch. That's in, get everything centered a little bit. Now coming here with our heater switch. I just kind of squeeze on the outside, grab it on the back from two fingers and squeeze it together. Okay, now we do, now we're gonna do these two switches. So we can do the defroster here and the hazard switch here. Slide it on. Slide on the ground for your for the light in the hazard switch. Okay, here we have some needle nose just to kind of help that slide on right there. Next, we're gonna do the power to the flash relay. So this always has power unless if you disconnect the battery like we did. So that's why we put some heat shrink because sometimes you just need to remove it. And then if this touches any of the ground, so specifically this brown one, you'll always short out a, you'll burn out a, um, a fuse. And now we can do our defroster switch. And carefully slide them in. Okay, now we can continue with screwing this in, this piece in. The way this goes, there you should have two screws that have a finer thread, as you can see right there. They're the two that are going to go into the top of the that go right in here above the dash, and then the rest will go around. And this is where people always tighten these too tight, and they always end up cracking the plastic. So nice and light. I didn't go very tight. It's not going to jumble out the instrument's clusters held in by its own screws. Now these two fine ones that go up here. And then one last screw that goes up in here to hold the top of the radio up. Then we can plug in the radio, black connector in the bottom, brown connector in the middle. And then we can connect the antenna adapter. I'm sliding the antenna wire back here a little bit. Connect that to the radio. Just carefully Hold all the wires down so that they don't interfere with this mounting nub in the back. And then slide the radio in. Okay, next we can install this plastic piece right here. I, end up, I couldn't find any blanks right now. I know I have some laying around somewhere. We can install this piece. And lastly, this little piece here. So 
connect the plastic connector. Remember where these two are, so they're both a little bit on the right side. Slide that in and install these. You can kind of see the see where they are through the through the slits. This. And then next we have our steering wheel. Slide the earbag connector through it carefully. We had it perfectly aligned earlier when we removed it. Align it perfectly again when we install it. Torque for this is going to be 30 foot pounds or 40 Newton meters. Next step will be to grab your airbag. Connect the connector again. and then install a two T27 Torx. Screws, they should have stayed in the back of the steering wheel, the T27s. And then since we removed the negative terminal when we rem to remove the dash, we're gonna connect it again. Tighten it by hand. And that concludes how to remove and reinstall the dash. Thanks for watching another episode of Ollie's Repairs. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment for more.